Hi. Um, I'm, I'm really happy to be here. Uh, thank you for coming to the Open Nebula conference. I hope you're excited to be here as, uh, as I am. Um, so I work for Akamai. Um, Akamai is a company that has a, a global network of uh, servers distributed you know, um, all over the world in various data centers at different ISPs. Um, let's throw some numbers up here just to give you sort of an idea of uh, the scale um, of sort of the, the server deployment that we have. Um, 132,000 servers, um, they're all over the world, 2,200 locations um, in all these different networks and all these different cities. And so you can see this is really distributed globally and we're delivering, you know, all this bandwidth, you know, 10 plus terabits per second, you know, sort of at our, at our peak times a day. I think we just hit, uh, I don't know, what was it, like 18 or something the other day. Um, and so we're, we're pushing all this data, I guess, because Akamai's a, um, our primary business is what's called a, a content delivery network. And so that means we're taking the, the data of our customers, like the, you know, the web pages, the, you know, the iTunes songs, you know, the Facebook pictures, and we're sort of distributing those, these all over the world so that like, our customers, um, end users, can um, get to these you know, with lower latency and much, much quicker than they would be if they're being delivered from some centralized server. Um, and as you can see, like, you, it's an impressive number up there, 15 to 30% of uh, web traffic. Um, and obviously, this is probably a very you know, certain times, I guess, you know, maybe it hits 30% at some point. But we do hit, you know, it's a significant amount of the, of the web traffic uh, at certain points in time, I guess. So Akamai is really, a, it's an impressive company. We've got a, an impressive set of uh, servers out there. Um, so I'm just trying to give you an idea of sort of the problems we're uh, trying to deal with. Um, so I'm, I'm a software engineer at Akamai. I'm, I'm working on the, on the platform infrastructure team. Um, and so the, my team sort of deals with the sort of layer of software that, that goes on every single server out there that provides sort of the, the infrastructure services, you know, that, that like the, basically the other Akamai services that sit on top of this use. Um, and so I joined Akamai a few years ago. Um, I was working on the communications infrastructure team, and I was just on a, on a sort of a relatively small corner of the world, this, this little you know, piece of software that we use for doing messaging between all of our servers. Um, you know, this distributed messaging system that is sort of underlies the, um, the service, the, the magic of Akamai that sort of maps the entire internet to sort of, you know, map the right user to the right server at the right time. And so I was working on the thing that, you know, allows these, this, this mapping system to uh, do its communication. And um, I, I had some difficulty initially, you know, trying to make changes to this particular piece of software because this thing was, you know, deployed to all these servers and, you know, it's this, it's a, I mean, it's not a super complex piece of software, I guess, but because it's so distributed globally, it was sort of difficult for me to know that like, well, this bug fix that I'm making, is this, is this really fixing this bug? You know, is it causing another bug? You know, I, it's, it's hard to tell because, you know, this, this, the behavior is so unpredictable in, the, in this world of like these, these servers that are distributed everywhere and like latencies and um, especially from like a reliability perspective, you know, this, this change that I'm making, is it, is it sort of going to be, you know, have continue the sort of dependability that we need in order for our system to work correctly. Um, and so I feel like part of the problem that, that I was having is that uh, sort of a lack of a realistic environment in which to, to test this piece of software. And it's like I, I was in the lab, you know, we have, you know, some, some kind of ability to sort of, you know, get our stuff into a, into a sort of a lab testing environment, but it wasn't, it wasn't realistic enough. Um, and so I felt there was like sort of a real lacking for that. Um, so a year or two later, I found myself in a slightly different role, a little more of a generalist kind of role, and I found myself in the position to sort of look at addressing uh, some of these problems. Um, so the problem I'm addressing right now is the how to get our platform software, the software that, that underlies you know, every, every single server at Akamai, how to get this out faster and with a smaller likelihood of disruption. So we find that you know every single time we you know make a new software deployment of this platform software, there, there's some there's some guy that sits on top of here that is you know has you know, is, is using this software in some unpredictable way, and we're finding that it um, causes some disruption. And uh, we're using Open Nebula to do this. We found Open Nebula to be a, a great thing, and so I'm going to tell you a little bit about uh, how we're using it. 
Yeah, okay. So like I mentioned before, Akamai is you know, globally, globally distributed cloud of physical servers. Um, machines at Akamai are grouped into functional units called, called networks. Um, we have edge networks, and so these provide sort of the services that we um, sell to customers eventually. And so we have CDN services. CDN stands for Content Delivery Network. Uh, we have object and file storage, we have analytics, and these are all sort of, you know, things that sit at the edge. We call them edge networks because they're at the edge of Akamai, you know, the closest that we can get to the end user. Um, and along with that, we have what we call infrastructure networks, and these sort of provide the services to, services to these edge networks. Um, and so we have, you know, various systems. Are, we have distributed file transfer, uh, we have uh, messaging, we have monitoring, reporting. And so these allow us to do you know, pretty cool things. Like we can you know, take a file and basically distribute it out you know, to all of the servers on the Akamai network you know, within a couple of minutes um, in a very efficient way. And sort of you know, similar thing with the messaging. And we also have this reporting system, this monitoring system that allows us to have each server out there is like exporting you know, data. You know, and it goes into these aggregators that live in one of these infrastructure networks and allows us to basically execute SQL queries you know, that allow us to um, you look at the state of every single machine and continuously monitor the state of every machine just by running you know, select star from machine details and, and like see the state of that machine. Um, and the nice thing about it is, th is that every single um, application can sort of export its own table and we, so we can see all sorts of interesting data that way. Um, but it's difficult, right? We have, we have, this, we have this software that's where the, um, <coughs> where, the, where the network specific software, which is I haven't even talked about, I haven't really talked about that much, but we have this, this platform software that, that sits underneath. And this, the problem here is that the, the platform specific software is sort of on an independent um, release cycle than the network specific software. Um, and we find ourselves as the as the people that develop this platform software in the position of trying to, you know, make the 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 teams that you know sort of maintain these uh, disparate networks that we're talking about these edge networks. Um, we find ourselves in the position of trying to convince these people that yes, the software we're developing and these changes that we're pushing out, yes, they're not going to break you, and yes, they're actually going to provide the feature that you want uh, safely. Um, and so we're. I mean, that's that's a problem we're trying to deal with is is to allow that to happen safely, um, and so we've we've been you know going through these measures to basically try to you know package this up and, and make it easier to to consume for people, but we're still we're still having problems with this, and so this is just to sort of give you an idea of of sort of the organization of this stuff. Um, we have an inf infrastructure network here, and this is you know there's one server on here. This is this is you know represent representative of one server, but you know there are multiple servers. Um, in each, obviously, in each of these networks, um, and there are multiple of these edge networks. Um, but we generally have like a you know this this software here that sits on the infrastructure network, um, and then we have the network specific so like network that basically talks to the the software in the edge network, um, and that you know communicates with each other, and we we interact with uh, in order to sort of interact with the service, we have to talk to the software on the infra network. But the software that sits out there on the edge network is generally where we see the problems, because we see um, the scale is much larger. Because these edge networks are typically on the order of, um, you saw before, you know, ten to, ten, tens of thousands of machines. Um, and on the um, infrastructure networks, we might only be on the hundreds or thousands of machines. Um, and on the edge networks are typically where we see um, where we see you know, the software really pushing the limits of the design, you know, the operating system, and the hardware. Um, so we're seeing problems with you know memory pressure, CPU starvation, and I/O starvation, and that's you know typically where our software starts to fall over. We're not handling you know sort of that that error condition exactly right, um, and that it causes it to fail in a bad way. I guess we're trying to avoid those sorts of problems. Um, and we even find cases where. Um, the edge networks are using, you know, our platform software, and maybe in an unexpected or even unsupported way. Um, but unfortunately, once you uh, once you once something becomes used in uh, used in a certain way, I guess it's difficult for it to become unsupported. Um, anyway, so we, we're trying to test test our software in a, in a realistic way. Um, okay. 
So let me let me sort of back out a little bit. Um, we're we're trying. So what we want to do is to be able to realistically sort of represent the state of a network. We want to be able to sort of we have this edge network here that we're trying to create sort of this realistic environment. But in order to do that, we sort of want to we want to be able to represent the state of this thing somehow because um, we want to we want to be able to basically build one or create one. Um, unfortunately, while a lot of the state of a particular network is is known and reproducible, like such as you know the basically the it's the, the software that's installed there and the configuration of it and sort of the a lot of times the, the dynamic configuration of this thing is 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 known. When I say dynamic configuration, that's like like configuration that can change outside of a, a given software release. But unfortunately, like the persistent you know state of a machine or a network um, can change and you know, like the like the database state, or, on, or like you know, stuff that's on the file system, and like there are often uh, manual changes that occur um, um, for a given network at a given time, sort of to you know, a, like something that might be required to um, deploy a given release of software, or um, to you know, something might might be required in, in a, sort of an extraordinary condition. Um, and each network tends to have, you know, some kind of built-up state that's that's necessary for it to to function properly. And this is never well documented or well defined, unfortunately. And so we find ourselves in the state where a given edge network is not something that we can just take and build. Each edge network sort of has, you know, an expert or a set of experts that know how to create these things, know how to build these things. But us, you know, being in the platform team, don't have a way of sort of just taking this edge network and building it. And you know, being able to sort of take this edge network and put it with our you know platform, you know software, and put it against our infrastructure network and, and do this in a realistic way, um, without you know having this expert on the edge network to you know tell us about how to configure this thing. Um, let's see. Okay, so let's let's zoom out a little bit and think about. Um, like a, like think about a set of of Akamai networks, right? So we're talking about a particular network is difficult to reproduce. Um, you know, sort of zoom zoom out that problem, zoom out on that problem, and say, well, we want to be able to take all of the networks that sort of exist in sort of the Akamai ecosystem and try to represent those. Um, so I talk about the notion of an Akamai instance. When I say an instance, I'm talking about the the idea that. Um, um, Akamai and Akamai, a particular, a particular um, the, the, like so the, the the deployed network of Akamai is is an example of an Akamai instance. It's you know you can you take all these networks together, you know and each has their you know you know their component machines, and you put all these together and you have something that provides these Akamai services that we can um, you know sell and make you know dollars and cents from. Um, and so we have we have one of these, and each each one of these Akamai instances is is self-contained. It's got limited external dependencies, and so that sort of gives us some some freedom. Um, and so we have obviously we have multiple of these instances. We have um, the production instance, which is you know sort of on the order of ten to the fifth um, separate you know uh, disparate machines. Um, and then we have lots of, you know, sort of internal instances that we that we use for, you know, QA um, and development. And a lot of these are on the order of, um, you know, 100 machines or so, um, because they're just sort of basically shrunken down, you know, versions of the production network. Um, and so, let's see. So, like I was saying before, like no single team really has the expertise to sort of, you know, maintain like a, a real you know, good instance, you know, except for the production instance, because the production instance takes lots and lots of resources for us to run um, smoothly. We have a we have an entire team of people in our uh, network network operations control center that you know, are basically you know watching this you know production instance you know 24/7, and are you know looking at the monitoring data coming out of here and making sure that each server is operating the way it's supposed to. Um, as well as we, you know, each sort of at the higher level, you know, the software developers are there, sort of providing you know, second or third tier support of 
well, this, this machine isn't operating correctly. Why isn't it? And how, how can we fix it? Um, and so it's, it's, it's difficult to sort of to, to encapsulate that in, into a, a, like a real working internal network um, instance, I mean. So we, we find that these instances are labor, labor intensive to manage. Um, and so we'd like to be able to sort of create these as uh, a commodity. Um, and so when I say a commodity, I, I mean something where I can sort of just, I'm not, not going to create this out of thin air and it's not, you know, coming for free, but like I can, you know, pay some cost, you know, in this ideal, this cost would be in terms of, well, you know, disk space and CPU time and, you know, IO bandwidth or something, you know, so I, I can press a button, you know, and, and create an Akamai instance that's working and, you know, that allows me to, you know, um, Ha, you know, have this and hand them out to people, you know, to, to individual groups and even individual developers and individual, you know, QA engineers so they can, you know, run tests against this, you know, install the new, new version of the software and, and start running their tests against this thing. Um, and so because, um, yeah, so, but unfortunately we, we find that um, Automatically bootstrapping a an instance from scratch is is possible, um, and when I say bootstrapping, I mean I you know I start with like say a, a bare set of machines you know just like with a, a basic Linux operating system like our our basic version of the Linux operating system we have our own you know Linux distribution that we use, um, and taking that bare set of servers and like you know installing you know all of our software from scratch and trying to put all of this state that I was talking about earlier into it, this dynamic configuration, you know, the static configuration, and try to do whatever manual configuration or manual changes are required to turn this into a real working Akamai instance that provides the, the services that we have. Um, that's, it's possible to do this. In fact, we've done some experiments with, with making this happen, and we have sort of rough working versions of this. But we find that it's difficult, it's, it's slow, it's error prone to, to sort of do this, I guess. Because every single time that we ever change our software, we have to sort of come up with like, you know, maybe a new bootstrapping step, I guess. And we don't have a lot of control over, you know, especially the edge networks that are changing their, you know, software and causing, you know, some new bootstrapping step to be necessary, I guess. And so we don't find this particular approach to be as maintainable, and so we're, we're looking for other other ideas about how to how to make this work. And so the the solution that um, that we're that we're looking at right now, and that we've we've got a, a good way towards implementing, is uh, using virtualization to sort of instead of trying to represent the state externally and push that into a set of machines that um, that we're trying to you know bootstrap and and um, you know, build into an Akamai network. Let's just build the Akamai network using virtual machines. And, um, you know, we can take this well-managed, you know, Akamai network and we can just copy it around. And, you know, by just, you know, copying the underlying images and moving it around. And that way we can have this well-managed instance of Akamai machines. And, you know, instead of trying to represent the state outside, representing the actual state of the Akamai instance in the machines themselves, I guess. And so now we care, you know, less about trying to represent that state outside because we just have the state in the machines. That's great. We don't really have to concern ourselves with, you know, how are we going to bootstrap this thing? You know, how are we going to represent this data? We just have the machines. We can copy them around. It's just like an object. That's great. And so the, the nice thing about uh, the virtualization concept, and especially Open Nebula, is that we can abstract away like all of the sort of underlying um, management that we need to do with uh, the virtualization. Like we don't have to worry about, um, you know, the you know, what what physical servers are these VMs going to go on? You know, what are the you know what are the what does the you know virtual hardware look like? We just have these virtual templates. You know, what does the networking stuff look like? We have you know virtual network templates that we can create. Um, on the fly, um, and so you know the nice thing about Open Nebula, you know the idea of using like a, you know, the cloud for this is we can just sort of abstract all that away, and you know we can use this, 
you know, this cloud concept to say, just give me a machine. You know, here's what it looks like. Give me a machine, you know, and you know, it'll you know, get scheduled out you know, the, the way that I want it to using Open Nebula. And it just provides me a nice abstraction that I can use to sort of create whatever sort of machine that I want and create as many of them as I want, as many of them as I have uh, hardware resources for. And um, it allows me, to, allows me to do that. Um, so the idea here is that we're going to, you know, we're going to have this QA instance that's got, you know, 100 machines in it. And we're going to take each one of these machines and clone them. And then have, we're going to have this copy of this QA instance. Um, and it's going to be an exact, you know, copy. And so, sort of, each individual machine, like the, the in order to, to clone one of these things, it's 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 relatively simple. We just have to power down the VM. Uh, we're going to clone each disk in the VM. We're going to add a new virtual network, and then we're going to construct a new VM template that's based on the the old VM template, with just the exception that it's going to use a new virtual network. Um, it's going to use the disks that we just cloned. Um, then we're going to reboot, you know, boot, boot the old VM back up, so now it's still running in the state that it was in before, and then power up the new VM. And so that in that way, we sort of have two copies of the same VM. Um, and so if we sort of generalize that to sort of say, well, okay, we're trying to you know clone an entire Akamai instance. Well, okay, we're just cloning every machine in there in the Akamai instance, but the problem that we have is that the way that Akamai machines are configured, the way that our systems work, is that each Akamai machine has a static IP. And so we don't, we don't have any provision for using DHCP or anything like that. And each, each machine not only has a static IP, but each machine, when it's installed and configured, also refers to other machines by their static IPs. And so you know, the, the, I, the, st the static IP, the IP of a given machine is actually sort of its, its identification, its, its ID. So we can't really get away from that. And so the, and I, I know there are other solutions that might involve, you know, well, okay, each machine, you know, can change its IP, you know, as, after it's been cloned or something like that. But it wasn't really going to work for us. And so we had to have a way of sort of isolating these machines such that, you know, when I create my, my machine that's got the same static IP, we have, we don't want there to be a conflict. So the answer to, for that was, well, okay, we can just put it behind a, in a private network and then isolate it using a network address translation. Um, and so the Open Nebula virtual router appliance um, was it's sort of a perfect fit for that. Um, I, I, I'm not sure if, well, yeah. So, so this, this isolates you know, these, these instances behind these, uh, behind these gateways. And so this, this provides you know, a, nice, a nice way of, um, of, of isolating, I guess. But we still sort of have the desire to sort of refer to these, um, sort of reach into the, each one of these you know, private networks, these private instances, and, um, and, and you manipulate these machines. You know, we want to do software installs to them. We want to you know, use the Akamai services that are inside each of these instances. And so we have a couple of different ways of sort of, of, of getting to this. Um, we have the idea of of, of using um, network address translation, sort of in the reverse sense, like where we have an external IP um, on the outside that allows us to refer to a particular machine inside. Um, we can also use um, SOX. SOX is just a, a proxy method for reaching, in, you know, through a through an intermediate machine. And this allows us to use some of our command line applications um, transparently just by using a wrapper. A command line wrapper around them. And we also have this concept at Akamai called Authgate. And so Authgate is simply, it's sort of a drop in replacement for SSH. And it's, all it is basically is an SSH forwarder. Like we can create an SSH session to the, to the gateway. And then the gateway, you know, using some protocol will allow us to, you know, create, you know, another SSH session to a, a machine. Um, Inside the instance, and we can it'll just connect those up, and then it'll, it just we just it's just like we have an SSH um, session directly to the machine inside the um, inside the the instance, and so the the nice thing about this this auth gate thing is that um, all of our a lot of our tools are sort of integrated with this, and so we can easily you know do software installs using this auth gate um, auth gate abstraction, 
and a lot of our other tools are sort of, you know, are aware of the existence of authgate. And so SSH and, and you know, this, this authgate idea are, are very pervasive at Akamai. We use SSH for essentially everything. Um, we just find that it sort of, it's a, it's a nice abstraction a lot of the time. And, you know, the idea of using authgate here is, is just sort of a perfect fit for us. And so we've taken the, the Open Nebula virtual router appliance and we sort of added, you know, support for like, you know, this, this um, reverse NAT idea and, you know, the SOX, you know, idea and like added an authgate server here that, you know, does exactly what we want it to do. And we found it to be very sort of simple to do this and it's been a very nice, um, very nice way of um, doing this. Okay. So that's good. Okay. Okay. So, Open Nebula is, is great for managing VMs and the resources, like I've like I've talked about. But um, we we really wanted another sort of level of abstraction for our users, our internal users of this of this of this sort of instance service. Um, we wanted to be you know very simple. We wanted to be able to sort of ha be aware of the existence of Akamai networks, these, these functional units of an Akamai instance, and Akamai instances themselves, and maybe expose some you know, specific Akamai services and, and machine types as well. Um, and so we wanted to sort of create another layer of abstraction on top of Open Nebula in order to allow us to sort of refer to this Akamai layer of things. Um, and so what we, do, what we did is we created basically an Akamai instance service you know, this is, it's service oriented rather than sort of just being a, a programming library or something like that because we wanted it to be, um, you know, programming language and test harness agnostic. We have all kinds of uh, test harnesses and, you know, programming languages are used all around the company. And we wanted to be able to sort of provide this service that was agnostic. And so we're using this, um, you know, REST based, um, JSON based uh, web API to sort of provide this instant service. Um, we found that to be a really nice abstraction. Um, and I'll mention here, actually, that um, I, I saw that there is um, a new feature of Open Nebula 4.2 um, that allows you to use, you know, that allows you to sort of refer to multiple VMs. I thought that was quite interesting. It's something I didn't actually know about until today, <laughs> so I'm glad I came to this conference. Um, and so I, th I, think that's, I think that's quite interesting, and it might have some applications here. Um, it might be using that might be interesting for us for this for this instant service. I'm not quite sure how it's going to apply yet, uh, but I think that's interesting. So this is sort of an example of what the what the workflow might look like for this for this instant service. Um, here you have the user here in the lower right hand corner, and he's he's just going to say something like, "Give me an instance, you know, that looks like the one that Joe has over there, you know, because that one that one's the good one. That's, that one's the one I really like." Um, you know, because that, that's, that's the one that's actually working and has the services that I need. And so he, he says that to, you know, the instant service. The instant service, like, says, oh, I know about that instance. I know about all the, you know, Akamai networks that are in that instance. I know about all the machines that are in that instance. And he just, he says to Open Nebula, well, okay, take these machines and clone them. Um, and he sort of goes through the steps that I illustrated earlier that, um, that are necessary to, to clone the machines in the way that I'm talking about. And he, you know, creates the new resources and he instantiates a new gateway using the, the variation of the Open Nebula virtual router appliance that um, I talked about. And uh, he says, okay, that's, here's your instance. Um, now the user has this instance and he can use it. And so, I mean, it's, I, I feel like this is, uh, from the user perspective, this is, is really quite simple. Give me an instance, and you know, some amount of time later, now I'm ready to use it. Now I have this instance that's available to use. It's you know, nice and relatively easy. Um, yeah, so now we can you know, create these copies of instances. Um, you know, that's, that's great. So, so, so what? So what we're trying to do is we're trying to you know, take this expertise from around the company and to create this, you know, internal master instance, like for, you know, QA and for developers to use, you know, so we can use this instance service to provide, you know, something that's actually realistic. And so this sort of harkens back to the, to the problem I was referring to um, 
earlier, you know, when I was a new developer, I was having lots of trouble with, well, I don't really feel like I have a realistic environment, you know, where I'm doing my testing and development. And so I, I feel like if I'd had a service like this, you know, at the company, you know, when I'd first started, it would have made things like much easier for me. Uh, because like the, the, the breadth and the, the depth of the complexity of the software systems at Akamai is just so high that it's, it's, it's so difficult for someone that's just getting started to, 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 to really get their feet wet. Um, and sort of having the ability to sort of create these instances and, you know, not worry about, um, uh, you know, ruining the state of the instance because you're sharing it with other people and being able to sort of play with it and manipulate it at will is, I, I think, just a very, very powerful concept for us, um, even just for, like, the, this, these internal instances. And so what we're trying to do is we're trying to leverage expertise from around the company to create this internal master instance. And so, I mean, this is you know, going back to the concept of we're trying to create this commodity where we don't need these experts anymore, <laughs> or at least only periodically. Um, and so each, each um, additional network gets it, closer, gets it closer to a real instance. And so each sort of additional um, network that we add to this master instance just makes it a more and more powerful concept. Um, and we're, we're trying to get here. This, like, uh, this, is, this is still in the relatively early uh, stages, I guess. But we've, everything I've talked about, we've done. But it's like this is, this is what we're trying to work towards right now, is, is sort of getting all this expertise from around the company to sort of build this, this, you know, this master instance. Um, OK, so I'm actually doing pretty well on time. Um, and so, so one thing that's sort of fallen out of this is um, we're, we're finding that you know, this, this concept of referring to Akamai instances, which is something that's actually relatively new, sort of the, most of the sort of developers at Akamai are sort of stuck on the concept of, well, I have my network and I know about my network and I don't really know about anything else. But like the idea of you know, referring to Akamai you know, as, as an Akamai instance is, I, I find to be a, a very, very uh, powerful concept that it's, I'm trying to introduce that to, you know, the other uh, developers at Akamai. And so we, we find that it's this, this Akamai instance service that I was referring to earlier sort of gives us the tools and um, provides the, conceptually provides like a nice interface to sort of interacting with an Akamai system. And we're seeing that you know it's it's relatively easy for us to adapt this thing to um, not only providing a view of you know open nebula created virtual machines that you know comprise an Akamai instance, but also to refer to existing Akamai networks you know that are composed of right now physical machines, and so we can even use this to refer to um, our production instance. Um, and so what we're trying to do right now is, you know, develop some, you know, some libraries, a layer of abstraction that allows us to sort of refer to these instances, you know, very generically and sort of expose some of the Akamai services underneath and sort of allow us to use the same tooling to manipulate and do testing on, um, on these open nebula virtually created um, Akamai instances as well as the production instance of Akamai. Um, and as well as sort of existing physical lab instances, which are which are still important. Um, and so, actually, let me let me go back here, because we we find that we have the desire to be able to to combine the idea of uh, a physical machine and a virtual machine, because physical machines are, are are very important to us, because we find that, especially since all of the all, almost all of the machines that we have out there on our network are are physical right now. And we, we want to, when it comes to performance characteristics, we want to um, have a realistic um, test, I guess. And so uh, well, uh, this is a, a feature that's sort of, that our, our, like the users of this internal system have desired is the idea of like combining a, a physical, a set of physical machines with, you know, these, these virtually created machines. Um, and so this is not something that we've actually done yet, but I, I think it's an interesting concept of like combining, you know, a cloud of physical machines with a, you know, a, a, a set of you know existing physical machines and sort of referring to those and um, addressing those with the same interface. Um, and so that's something we're trying to do because 
um, what, like I said, performance, performance is something that's important to us, and we want to have a sort of realistic uh, testing environment. Um, so let's see, I've got about five minutes. Um, so let's see. So test, testing at Akamai happens in, in, in a number of stages. We have the, the unit testing, uh, which happens sort of at the, at the software module level. And then we have like a, a dev QA stage, which is you know, mostly, mostly automated and testing that happens at sort of the you know, individual software component level. And then we have an SQA uh, stage, which is like you know, the, um, where we're testing the system. And then we have this, this concept that, um, I don't know, like, I don't know if like, this is something that like, other companies do, or, you know, that have you know, big software deployments, but when we make a software release, um, we do what's called checklisting, because our software releases are done in a staged fashion. And we, every, like we, you know, the first stage might be to, you know, simply deploy, you know, four or five sort of representative servers on, on, a, on, a, on a given network, deploy the new software release to this, you know, four or five representative servers. And then we look at these servers and say, okay, well, are they functioning correctly? And the person that typically does this, you know, sort of smoke test you know, or sort of inspects these machines to make, their, make sure they're functioning correctly is typically the developer of that software. And we consider the, the time of a, of a given developer to be relatively valuable. And so we'd, we'd rather not have them sort of doing these manual tests. And so we've been working as much as we can to sort of automate this idea of checklisting on the undeployed network. Especially since like we have this first stage where it's like we're deploying four or five machines and then doing this inspection. And then the second stage where maybe it's like you know, a few, couple of dozen and the third stage, you know, up to I think the larger the media networks have, you know, you know, nine or ten stages, I guess. And so we've been working as much as possible to sort of um, automate this idea of, of checklisting. And then in addition to that, and so this checklisting, um, a lot of times it's, you know, maybe it's SQL query, you know, against the network. I was referring to the idea of, you know, we have our, our monitoring and reporting system that, you know, allows us to, you know, run SQL queries against the network. We're using SQL queries, you know, to do this sort of checklisting as well as just logging into the machine and looking at the state. Um, and then at the next stage here, we have, you know, once the a release is completely deployed, we have this idea of alerting, where this, you know, this automated system sits here and you know continuously runs this SQL query and looks for problems with the network. You know, there, you know, like is is this particular value above some certain threshold? You know, are are, are all these machines up? Um, you know, is is some certain percentage of the machines that are providing the service down that kind of thing? And so that. Will alert, and you know somebody in our um, NOC, our Network Operations Control Center, will will see that, and they'll there might be some procedure associated with it, or they might have to alert the developer. Um, so that's that's sort of the the stages of, of of testing and monitoring that we have. And so what what I'm trying to get get at is to um, we want to be able to to use the same code to write tests by using a common interface to refer to an Akamai instance. And so this concept of an Akamai instance service, I think, is, is something that's going to really help us to provide that. Because we can combine sort of the what what are right now really sort of disparate in sort of there's there's all this code all over the place that you know does the dev QA and SQA and checklisting. If we could sort of you know get all of these different stages of development to um, to use you know this this one common inter interface to an Akamai instance. I, I think it would really provide us a lot of a lot more efficiency than, than we currently have. Um, and so I think this is a, a powerful concept, and it's like Open Nebula is really helping us to get there. And so the takeaway here is that um, we're we're using Open Nebula to build realistic copies of our deployed network for testing and development. Uh, we find this to be just a, a just a fantastic concept, and it's just a, a beautiful way to to refer to our network. Uh, we're we're providing the service internally uh, for our testing and development, and it's just it's just been you know, absolutely great. Like Open Nebula is just a it's a great project. It's it's I've I spent a lot of time with it over the last couple of years, and it's um, it's it's something that's really been helping out Akbai, and so I'm really really happy to um, have had the chance to use it. And to you know make some small contribution to the community as well, um, and so so that's it. Thank you for listening. Yeah. Question? Yeah. So you mentioned using the Open Nebula Roger plugin. Yep. So how are you seeing the improvement of software rotor plugins? Uh, 
Um, so the question was, uh, how do we find the performance of a software, you know, router appliance compared to like a hardware-based solution? Um, and the answer is that um, we haven't really gotten into sort of the the like the um, to the state of like really seeing the limitations of the performance of a software router. Um, and so I, I think that the 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 real benefit of, of a software router is um, the ability to sort of just sort of create this thing out of thin air and like not need like a, an additional hardware resource in order to create, let's say, a new Akamai, you know, virtual instance. Um, and so I, I don't have a great answer for your question because like I, I, I haven't looked at the performance characteristics of a, of a software router versus a hardware router and we haven't run into the limitations of a software router yet um, with sort of, you know, the amount of use that we've, you know, gotten from this solution. Um, but I mean, I, and there may be things that you can do with a, with a software router, like you know, to sort of maybe distribute the load somehow. Um, it's not something that I'm familiar with, but I, I think it's an interesting question or it's an interesting concept. Um, but unfortunately, I don't have a great answer for you. Yeah, so the, the question was, is do we ever find that um, instances are diverging and do we ever need to sort of synchronize like, you know, software from one of these, you know, this diverging instance? Um, and so sort of uh, to answer that, the, the model that we're sort of looking for is that sort of there's going to be sort of, if, if, if you think about this like a tree, you know, you're going to start, you know, start at the root and we're going to you know, have this, you know, here's a, a good, well-managed instance. And you know, people are going to create different, you know, clones of that, you know, to to you know use for their own uses. Um, and so, you know, so, so somebody you have know, got all these different sort of you know, um, you know, uh, copies, you know, all, all over the place, and you know they're going to be using it for their own purposes. And so I, I, the model that we're aiming for is well, you know, there's going to be sort of the the one group that sort of you know sort of carries forward like the mel well maintained instance. Um, and the, you know, we're the ones that are going to say, okay, well, we're going to create our own copy of this, and then you know, do whatever things we need to do to make it well maintained, and then you know, you know, create another, you know, create a, a saved copy of that clone, and then when somebody else, you know, then wants to have a new instance, you know, they'll create a, a copy from that. Um, and it could be that you know, some groups, you know, may find that they want to sort of, you know, go off and maintain their own sort of, you know, subtree of this. Um, but we haven't sort of run into that problem yet of like of of having to or wanting to sort of you know synchronize um, synchronize the the um, the state of these instances. But sort of given as long as there isn't too much of the problem that I was talking about before of like having to you know do this manual change you know manual changes and um, you know tweaking of a, of a particular instance, it's it's relatively easy for us to sort of synchronize the state because we can deploy a new software release. And you know, deploy new you know metadata using our distributed file transfer system, and we can synchronize that sort of state relatively easily. Um, but but I think I think just the, the power here is that we have the choice of doing this. We have the choice. We, we can now you know, I think it's a good problem to have is is to um, you know to have you know multiple copies of a well well managed instance you know maybe that are you know that are just much much more powerful than like anything that we had before, and I guess and they're easy to sort of manipulate and to move around. I, I think. I think what, what you're saying is potentially sort of a, a problem or maybe a little bit of a pitfall, but I think we're, if we're having such a problem, I think we're in such, so much of a better position than we were before that it's almost not a problem. <laughs> um, okay. Sure. Yes. So the the way that we've got this deployed in the lab right now is that the the Open Nebula servers, the Open Nebula, you know, physical machines are, are sitting in exactly the same place as, as where the, the instance service itself and um, you know the gateway 
and the you know the cloud of obviously the cloud of, of virtual machines that it's created. Um, I'm sorry. The question was, um, is 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 the Open Nebula server sitting in the same place on the network? And the answer is, I, I believe yes, if I'm understanding your que question correctly. So the instance service is is relatively lightweight. All it is is really a web application that's just driving Open Nebula. So while it is, it doesn't have to be because it's not it's not really moving any interesting data around. All it is is taking you know web requests from users and you know basically making XML RPC calls to the Open Nebula front end. Um, so while it is like in sort of the sort of the deployment model that we have now, it doesn't really have to be. It's unfortunately it, it is um, a lot of what sort of provides the value for us of 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 doing this is that it is you know sort of Akamai specific and it knows a lot about like sort of what an Akamai network is and um, you know what what an Akamai service is and like how to refer to those. Um, it, I, I think and so I think it's it's a really powerful concept to be able to sort of you know take virtual machines and sort of like groups of virtual machines and sort of um, Manipulate those like independently um, together, I guess, and so that's why I was, I was really excited to sort of see this new feature in Open Nebula 4.2, where it does have some ability to sort of you know use multiple VMs and sort of you know treat them as a group, I guess. And I'm sort of really looking at uh, ways that we can sort of leverage that you know to sort of you know help us with some of the problems that we're having, because um, I, I think it's a really powerful concept, especially for uh, companies like us that sort of have. You know, large groups of servers that we're you know interested in sort of treating as a group and you know maintaining as a group. Sure. How many servers are we? Are, how many Open Nebula servers are we are we running? Yeah. So that, that's sort of that's sort of an interesting question. Um, un unfortunately, sort of the state that we're in now is I, I've sort of I've, I've taken Open Nebula and I've sort of created um, a, a distribution of Open Nebula that sort of uh, fits into our deployment um, sort of uh, in infrastructure, and I've sort of you know taken this and sort of packaged it, packaged it up for like Akamai use internally, and I sort of said, hey, I'm using this. This is great. You know, here, uh, you know, other people can use this too, and so like there are all these groups all over the company. You know, I'd say you know seven or eight groups probably um, that are independently sort of running their own Aka Nebula. I'm sorry, <laughs> Open Nebula um, um, like masters and, and deployment and stuff. And so now our our lab manager has sort of you know also sort of you know thrown his hat into the ring, and now he's running an Open Nebula deployment that's got. Um, Hundreds of uh, physical servers in it, and you know, at this point, I'm, I'm sure there must be, you know, hundreds and hundreds of. I don't know the numbers actually, but he's he's probably got hundreds hundreds of VMs at this point. You know, probably over a thousand uh, VMs running on this. Um, but the answer, so for our for our deployment, that's um, that's you know running this instant service right now. It's more like on the order of like 20 or 25 physical machines. And you know we've we've got they're pretty powerful servers, so we we can run like you know three or four hundred VMs on that. Um, so that's to sort of give you the idea of the scale. But like like I said, this is still sort of in the relatively early stages, I guess. And we're trying to sort of build this thing up and provide it as a service for internal Akamai you know developers and, and QA people. Um, and so we're still in the relatively early stages here. Um, yeah. So that's I hope that answers your question. Sure. Yeah. 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 So um, the question was: We have our own Linux distribution, um, and you know, how does that affect you know how having to package up the um, uh, the Open Nebula distribution? I guess. Um, and so, like our our internal you know Linux distribution, I hope I'm not breaking any confidentiality by saying this, but it's, it's based on Ubuntu, um, and we we basically take the take the Ubuntu packages that you guys have, and we sort of um, I apply like a couple of a couple of uh, patches, like at least one of which I've I've um, uh, pushed pushed upstream to you guys. Um, 
but and and you know add a couple of patches to it to sort of you know make it fit you know with our sort of you know custom Linux distribution and um, nothing nothing too much different I guess um, it's it's more has to do like the the custom stuff that we I have to do there really has more to do with sort of the the deployment so like, I wanted to make it in, like in the idea is that I can write sort of a, a, a single Akamai, you know, sort of specific n configuration file and sort of deploy an entire, you know, open nebula, you know, master with, you know, nodes and, and, and just sort of deploy that very automatically and have like, you know, a Gluster file system, you know, automatically created and then you know, all of this stuff that's needed to sort of, you know, turnkey, you know, you know create, a, create an open nebula an installation, you know, just for some scratch using a single configuration file. I mean, it's pretty similar to like what uh, Puppet or Chef might do, I guess, but it's sort of our Akamai specific thing that does this, unfortunately. <laughs> unfortunately, unfortunately, because what we have is great, but it's a little bit, it was created about 13 years ago, and so it's fortunately getting a little bit long in the tooth, but um, because there are great open source tools out there that do a similar thing. Um, so um, I hope that answers your question. Okay, we have one more minute left, so I can probably take one more question. If anybody's got one, sure. Okay, the question was: Have we considered um, installing um, a, a virtual instance that we've we've talked about here on the, on the operationalized network? And the answer is that I, I think that's a great idea. Um, me myself, I think that's a great idea uh, because I, I think we've we've got um, applications out there that would be that would would find this sort of concept useful. Um, where we have um, we have products that we sell, managed products that we sell called um, called a managed CDN. We basically take a little mini Akamai and we sort of put it behind somebody's you know private. Um, firewall that they and then they use like sort of you know Akamai services behind their private uh, firewall um, to sort of you know derive the benefit of um, of having you know sort of a CDN um, and I think the idea of like doing this you know using one of these virtual instances is, is a great idea um, and so I'm trying to like sort of you know build up the the momentum to sort of uh, as as and selling this idea as like sort of a, a development and a testing sort of tool. Um, and if this sort of this concept becomes powerful enough and like people around the company sort of start to appreciate that this is you know, really powerful and a great idea, I'm hoping that eventually this might be something that would be used um, in an operationalized sense um, um, that we might even sell. But uh, we're, we're just not quite there yet. Like I said, we're sort of in the, in the early stages here. And um, so that's where we are. So I think we're out of time. So I want to thank everybody for, for listening and for all the great questions. Um, thank you.